Welcome back. Let's talk. Is Dumso back? That's the question on the minds of many Ghanaians uh, as reports of power outages keep increasing over the past 48 hours. Last night was no exception. Uh, large chunks of the country in darkness. Uh, we're going to have a conversation with uh, the MP for Secondi, Andrew Japa Mercer, uh, and the MP for Bongo, Edward Bauer. Uh, what are we witnessing? What exactly is it? Let's get to grips. Gentlemen, good morning. Thank you so much for your time with us. Good Pleasure morning. to be here. Yeah. Now, if we have time later, we'll, mm. uh, we'll touch on a statement that has been issued by the minority. Uh, they are highlighting some uh, issues raised in an international report on the uh, sort of performance in terms of human rights of many countries across the world. Ghana is featured in there, and uh, some interesting things are said about us. But whether they are interesting in the sense that we understand or in the Chinese sense, we'll get to grips with that later. Um, and then if we have time, perhaps we'll find out um, uh, what your thoughts are on the lawsuit that has been brought um, by DI Group against uh, multimedia. But let's start with power. Everybody's concerned. The lights are you know, either flickering or com completely off in many parts of the country. And we're hearing conflicting explanations. Mr. Mesa, surely you see uh, why Ghanaians would be concerned, because this sounds a little too familiar. When the reasons being given, uh, first of all, conflict, and then secondly, don't quite add up. Um, tell us, though, from your perspective, you know, where you sit, what is the actual cause of this, and when is it going to end? Well, good morning. Good morning to my very good friend, Edward and to our cherished uh, viewers, particularly those in my constituency, Second B. Uh, the wish of the Doomsday Prophets uh, would be that Doomsday was back. But I can assure you and the people of Ghana that indeed Doomsday is not, emphasis on not back. Many even, could you, what, what do we know to be Doomsday? This was persistent continuous shedding or management of power over a five-year period. And this is what, what we're experiencing now is what? The, the, my understanding, and indeed, I was just reading, if you, you know, I took off my glasses at the time that you were doing the instruction. I have a document here that I was referring to. And it's important that we put the issues out there for the good people of Ghana to understand. I mean, if for some reason, uh, there is a legitimate cause for power to be managed. I don't see why the government will not be candid and come out and tell the people. And so to the extent that that communication has not come, and to the extent that we are operating a system which can face challenges and so result in power outages, our friends on the other side, because uh, doom saw a five-year period under their governance became an issue, want to, by all means, put it on the front banner and suggest that we are back there. But we are not. You see, um, uh, so the Ghana power system experienced a number of system disturbances between March 12th and This is a great code document. Right, okay. Statement from... Okay, no, it's not entirely a statement. Right, okay. You know, uh, my sources right. gave me this document. Uh, uh, that resulted in the interruption of power supply to customers. The disturbances were due to challenges at the newly commissioned Accra Central substation. Okay, these challenges have occurred when there is already an ongoing five-day outage that has been taken on the 30, 330 kV transmission line between Tema and Abuazi. That is where they're doing the Pukwasi interchange. What's a five-day outage? No, you see, the, because of the construction of the interchange, Ghana Highways had requested right. that a relocation of some uh, 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 transmission towers be, be, be done. And so they had uh, scheduled five days yeah. to do that. So necessarily that 330 uh, uh, kilowatts of power that was passing mm. on that transmission line had been taken off to enable the okay. relocation to be completed. Then this uh, Accra Central Substation newly commissioned issue came up. That was resolved, and also on the 19th, uh, the 13th of, of um, uh, uh, March, 
-hmm. at about 19 hours, a disturbance similar to that of the previous day occurred. So a number of transmission lines in the southern central part of the power system tripped together with all generating units in service at Bui, Ameri, Sugon Asegli, Ask Aksa, Car Power, Bontema, and three units at Bon Hydro plants. Following the disturbances, restoration proceeded swiftly and the national interconnected transmission system was restored by 2011 hours. However, I'm some limited I'm loads I'm remain. I'm talking yesterday, 13th. Uh, no, that's, no, I just want to know so that we can. Okay, so argument. this is a report on the two day outages that we've had. Okay, this is. Okay, so, 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 could you, so what's the date of this so, document you are reading? Well, it was prepared last night, I suppose. That's why I've, I've hmm. indicated to you that. <laughs> Oh, right. This, and I, I don't think that this no, no, would no, be a no, secret no, document. No, no, no. It came to me from the Deputy Minister of Energy. On my way there, I called him and asked okay. him that, look. Perhaps, perhaps we need to clarify so, some dates, so, so, if, so, if it's so, okay. So, 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 I'm saying that that is the situation. You can see. Okay. Okay. So, I, mean, um, I would like and, us to and, clarify and, and, some and so, dates. And so, yeah. Um, if that's okay. Because we are unable to show your document to our Absolutely. audience. Absolutely, yes. Um, uh, you are saying that uh, the explanations you had the, the first night... It was something to do with the the, the new Accra. Uh, Absolutely, plant. and that the second night it was, was similar uh, transmission wires in the west. Um, but I have this statement from Gridco yeah, that yeah, seeks Gridco. to explain Tuesday night. Yeah, sure. And the Tuesday night explanation is what you are attributing to Wednesday. So it says on Tuesday some lines in the west tripped together with all generating units at Abwazi, Bui, Asogli, Mon, and the Kwong uh, uh, generating stations. It doesn't mention. It doesn't mention Ameri uh, in this um, in, in this one, but you have it on yours. And this is the explanation for Tuesday 12th. And I have the explanation March. for 12 here as well. Yeah, your explanation for 12th well, is something was, to do with Accra. And right? I was relating, no, it was the entire, this is an entire report. So, okay, so that includes, and you, you can take a look to confirm for yourself, March 12th disturbance mm -hmm. and March 13th, 2019 disturbance. I can see And then this. the conclusions that a sequence of events on the 12th, on the 13th, and the mitigation effects that have been taken into consideration in resolving this matter. So, so essentially, what I'm trying to tell you is that, yes, we've had some challenges over the past two days, okay? But that in no way results in anybody concluding that Doomsaw is back. That's the point that I'm trying to draw, draw home. So it's just two coincidental technical Absolutely, issues. Absolutely, yes. From the that information have that I have, the same sort 12th, of problem. There was an issue, and a similar occurrence took place yesterday evening. All right. Now, before we hear from Mr. Bauer, who I, I'm, I won't be surprised if he doesn't agree with you, but um, I want us to just have a look. The, I want uh, us to have a look at the effect of this. Uh, my colleague Latif Idris was out uh, and about last night while the lights were out in some parts of Accra, and uh, this is what people told him. It's 10.30 p.m. and around the same time yesterday, the lights were off in parts of the national capital and across the regions. Now, the question on the lips of many Ghanaians is whether we are heading back to the infamous days of Dumso. If, if we get lighter, we will be happy on that. So essentially, you want to see improvement? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How soon? <laughs> yeah, it depends on the government. Yeah, yeah. But you are not disturbed about it? Oh, we are disturbed. We they beg uh, government, you should do something about doing so for us. They beg uh, because of the way the light is going on. It's not good. Sometimes uh, maybe your fridge or aircon, then the way the light is going, it's not good. So we they beg uh, you should do something for us. Uh, so already you are feeling the impact of the, I mean, latest signs of doom. So already is that the case? Oh, yes. I think everything is normal. So we take it like that. But with the beggar, and uh, the beggars to do something about it for us. So because of the unbearable heat people are experiencing in their various rooms, some of them have come outside and are sleeping uh, at various vantage places so they can enjoy some fresh air. Uh, in order to avoid mosquito bites, you can see that they are burning some mosquito coils. I can see one 
and there is one other Mosit co coil at the extreme end, all in an attempt to get rid of mosquitoes whilst enjoying some fresh air on the outside. Ah, uh, the I want to work a say do so, and the news of me team, you know, I'm from Andra Castle, or when you know, so much light, you know, and then so it's so here, it's so happening. Do me so, and then one air bar back, dear, I mean, and then I mean, I mean, Oh, I saw by you be not do me so, and then two air day, I said, light, I want to be light, you know, you might be to also a more be out by your or the one crown crammer, so I can also in a suit. Right, so that's, that's how it felt for many of you uh, last night and the night before when the lights went out. Now, Mr. Bauer, te technical problems happen. That's, that's the reality of things. Um, should we, are, are we not jumping the gun if we suggest that two nights of technical difficulty equals do so? Yeah, thank you very much. Let me also use your platform to say good morning to your viewers. And then to also, uh, particularly my, my constituents, is by the agrees that we are here. Um, I don't, as to whether it is doom so, it's not doom so, load shedding, what have you. That is not the, uh, the centrality of the argument. Right. So the minority is not insisting that it's doom so. As to whether it's do, what is doom so, you put on and put off. Is that not doom so? That's what it simply means. But that is not where my challenge is. My challenge is on the, 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 the lack of transparency in the communication that they give to us. When this challenge started on Tuesday, indeed, there were even some places, even on Monday evening, there are some places that people had, uh, what do you call it, uh, issues of lies of and other things. Initially, the, the blame was put on PDS. You see, oh, PDS had come on, and the fact that because of the changeover, they were having challenges. But who put that blame on PDS? No, that, if you went on social media, you went okay. everywhere. The public, yes. not the government, the public. Indeed, okay. I saw a post where you could see that uh, one of a journalist from one of your sister's you know, uh, stations had put that, remember that about 90% of the workers of PDS are from ECG, so they will have the same problems. I mean, the person had put something okay. that was hilarious, but he was trying to make a point. Then PDS comes us to say that, look, the problem is not ours. Because we, for us, we, our systems are working. And it made a lot of sense because the challenge was not only centered around the PDS catchment area. The PDS catchment area, which is the ECG catchment area, does not extend, for example, to the three northern regions. It doesn't extend to northern Volta. It doesn't extend to northern Brunhavo and then maybe some parts of Ashanti region. So the fact that this problem had extended to those areas meant that it was not about the distributor. Then you had um, uh, an explanation, a statement coming out from Gridco, talking about the fact they had it. Actually, the, the name they've given to that one is just the transmission between Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire. Right. The Western the transmission. The Western transmission. Right. Is that that one? Is that interconnection transmission? That was a disturbance. And it had been restored. Mm -hmm. So our point was that it meant that we needed to have, yesterday, we should all things be equal. We should have had, uh, what do you call it, lights. Mm -hmm. Ask a lot of Ghanaians, and they will tell you that, that was not the case. Indeed, when I was coming today, most of the uh, radio stations had to tune into, when they were calling their correspondents in the various areas, they said, look, they experienced uh, outages. I do not have a problem when there are repairs. And when normally they are going to be repairs, there's always a statement that is issued ahead of time. So they tell you that, for example, we are, doing, we are going to work on this transmission line. And so maybe between this period and this period, we'll be offloading the load on this part to another transmission line to be able to work. So usually we are told that. And most of those works are not done in the night. They, because of the fact that they really need to work on them, they are not done in the night. So for you to have an explanation that seems to suggest that it's because of some works that are being done, that is why the problem is coming, is problematic. That's the first thing. But we have all agreed that from all indications, it is not distribution, it is about generation. Because, whether, because you, don't, you are talking about plants tripping. So if plants are tripping, it means that they are not generating. So it means that that is where the problem is. It is not with distribution. So now it comes to generation. I have said this, and I'll continuously say it, and luckily enough, if my colleague finishes, he can 
he, when he gets back to Parliament, he should talk to his colleague, the chairman of Mines and Energy Committee. Over the weekend, from Friday till Monday, we were in uh, Ebri, looking at the energy sector and then the challenges that they have. Kojo, it is important to state that as we speak today, there is serious liquidity crisis in the utilities, within the utilities. You have VRA, you have car power, you have Asogli and other IPPs unable to procure crude to generate. It is the truth. You talk to them even individually as CEOs and other things, and they will tell you this. That look, that is the challenge we have. So for example, they are able to produce power. They give it to ECG. Yeah. And you know, even with the PDS, ECG will still buy the power, you know that. ECG is not the middleman. They buy the power and give it to PDS. PDS. So they generate the power. They give it to uh, uh, ECG. ECG is not able to account for this power. And therefore, they cannot pay. It is not because of the fact that you and I, who are consumers, do not pay our bills. Indeed, if you look at the collection rates of ECG over the last two years thereabout, it is almost 98%. And that is why collection rates. So that's why... Because of the new prepaid Yeah, the prepaid rates. issues. So that is why even ECG in itself, in terms of the uncollectable, uh, allow, the allowable un uncollectables, that in terms of the tariff, they give them only 2%. That we can ent entertain losses of about 2% in terms of collection rate. So in terms of their collection rate, it is fantastic. The challenge is that the amount that they collect, they are unable to give them because it doesn't translate to the value that they give to them because the, of the depreciation, the of, the depreciation city, of the city. Because, <laughs> because, for example, car power. Car power will buy its HFO. Mm -hmm. That's a, a heavy uh, fuel oil. Buy its HFO in dollars. Generate the power. But they will sell it to ECG in cities. So when you have a depreciation of the city, even though they give you the same amount of money, what then happens is that there's a shortfall because of exchange losses. So over a period of time, they begin to start accumulating debt. And that then castigates a... a, a, a it, it translates into what they call it losses in all other sectors. Indeed, one way out, I was sharing with you the fact that if you look at Greek alone, their exchange rate losses for just 2018 was $148 million. Because of these things, most of their ratios, you know, most of their ratios in their financials have gone overboard to the extent that external donors. Who had certain covenants because the covenants they had with uh, Gridco for some of their expansions and other things was the fact that you must, for example, keep if your, your current ratio should not be uh, anything below 2 to 1. Currently, it's 0 to, uh, it's zero to uh, 9.0, uh, 9.2. So, uh, so, 0.92. So, you realize that because they have gone out of the covenants that they signed with these donors, the donors have stopped releasing monies to them even to expand their infrastructure. So, they have a serious challenge in that. Now, the question you ask yourself, why is it so? You have the city. At the time, we had a major review. That was somewhere around 2015. A city was equivalent to uh, three cities. Uh, a dollar was equivalent to three cities, 80 pesos. Then, in March 2018, we reviewed the tariffs downwards by 17%. Meanwhile, the city continuously depreciated. Today, as of this morning, as when you reported, I'm talking of your, uh, your radio station, Joy FM. You said that the CD was now, a dollar was now 5 CD, 77 pesos. Indeed, yesterday Bloomberg reported that the Ghana CD was the cheapest correct currency as we speak today. So if you in have Africa. a CD, yes, in Africa. So if you have a situation where the tariff levels have gone down, meanwhile the CD has also depreciated against the dollar, and most of the transactions these utilities do are in dollars, it clearly tells you that they will pile debt. You heard your station again reported that Ghana Gas, uh, VRA was owing Ghana Gas about $750 million. The reason was simple. The reason was because of the fact that ECG is not able to pay uh, Gridco and Co. They are also not able to pay VRA. VRA is not able to pay for the gas they buy because of these losses. That is what the problem The problem is huge. And that we need to look at it from that. Today, it's possible today we can have a situation where, yes, the lights will come. Tomorrow it will not be. And you will discover a doom so or no doom so. But I'm telling you, before June 30, 
when, according to PURC's own statement, they are saying that major review, you know, they had moved it from March to June 30. By June 30, I'm telling you that if we do not do anything, and these are the two things that we can do. Other government introduces, comes to parliament, introduces a budget line to get money to settle some of the indebtedness to the utilities. By June 30, this country will definitely go back to low shedding. Mr. Bauer, I think from what you've said, at least one thing we can take away is that uh, and you're a member of the Mines and Energy Co a Committee mm -hmm. in Parliament. What you are describing are forecasts of difficulties. No, you are this, not this, 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 this. ascribing these past couple of days' mm -hmm. situation to this um, you know, liquidity problem, are you? Let me make a point. You remember that just a few months ago we had the same thing. And the first thing they told us was that they said it was as a result of, uh, what do you call it, technical problems. You remember? Until we got to realize that, look, car power didn't even have uh, fuel to run. And government had to look for some $15 million to give it to car power to be able to purchase crude oil. And so in government's own communication to us, they then indicated that there were some parcels of crude that had come. And so therefore, car power was coming on stream. The point I'm just trying to make to you is that, look, when issues like this happened, uh, the utilities, if they were given the chance to be transparent to us, they would tell you exactly what the problem is. So again, are you saying that these past two, three days, the power fluctuations, the pockets of darkness across the country is because of a liquidity problem? It is. And I say because the technical, the technical reasons they've ascribed for these problems don't add up. That's the problem I'm making. They don't simply add up. And so and I can understand why. Usually it is easier to go, uh, 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 get away with an issue of, oh, it was an unexpected technical problem. Who, I mean, all of us drive our cars, don't we? So sometimes you can be driving on the motorway, you, you are stranded because there's a challenge. You can have that. So when you use technical reasons as basis, then to a very large extent, you absorb government. However, if you, it comes to the issue of financials, then you say, where is the indebtedness being occasioned? Then you will trace it back to government. And so they ship these people in, look, look at Grico's uh, statement they had given. If you look at PDS, there are early stages. They initially they said, oh, they have some technical issues because I read from City Online, some technical issues that they had. Then the next moment they said, no, no, it is not our fault. Even with PDS, they had two different statements coming from the same person, the director of communication, uh, communication, because of the fact that they have been shipped to say something that they don't believe in. But Mr. You see, Mr. Mesa. You, 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 I don't know why you keep contradicting yourself. You yourself, only a moment ago, said that the issue hasn't got anything to do with distribution. Yes. So why would anybody whip the distributor to say something when clearly yeah. the problem is not with him? Okay, can I explain that? Please. Yeah, good. I said it was not distribution because of the fact that, you know, people were ascribing the problem to PDS. PDS catchment area does not extend to the three regions in the north. Meanwhile, these outages were also being experienced in the north. So uh, the point I was trying to make, it couldn't have been the issue of uh, distribution. So his question is, why would anybody then go and put pressure on PDS to say to Yes, yeah, so the reason is because of the fact that they tell you that it is a localized problem. The moment the issue of localized problem comes in, it is about uh, distribution. And the distributor currently is PDS. That is the point I'm trying to make. The moment, you see, any time you see a politician wanting to lie about the power sector, he says, oh, these are, just, uh, these are just some localized problems that are being done. So that's what yeah. And localized problems are, are, are not like occasion. What, like no. what we kept hearing from no. the power minister. No, 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 no. 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 It's not your government. I see, let, let me make a, let, can, I, can I make my point, please? Can I sure. make my point? Localized, well, problems, I heard about localized. localized problems are not occasioned by Gritco and are not occasioned by uh, the generators, whether VRA or Kappa or what have you. So... Definitely, if you use localized problems as one of the reasons why you have the challenges, you must whip the distributor, the one who interfaces between the, uh, the consumer, the end, end user consumer, and you. You must whip the person in line to have a narrative that is consistent with the explanations you are giving. That is the argument I'm making. Is he, is he, uh, Koryo, if there were liquid, liquidity challenges in the energy sector, like he's... Intended no, are they not liquidity oh, challenges? Please. Oh, please permit okay. him yeah, yeah. To, to make that. Like he's intended on letting the good people of this country believe. The problem will be persistent. Because if ECG is unable <coughs> to pay the IPPs or Greco, 
for them to pay the IPPs. And the IPPs are unable to pay their full supplies. <coughs> it wouldn't be a two-day problem. But is it a two-day problem? But that's the issue that we are discussing now. Okay. There's been a massive outage across the country over two days. But Mr. Mercer... Now, you see, Kojo, I'm coming. Mr. Mercer, see, those two days include last night. So how are we certain that it's not over? How are we certain it's not the beginning of a persistent problem? You see, he situated his statement within a particular time frame. That they were having some meetings over the weekend in uh, Ibri, correct? Yeah. Yes, and that yes, yes. the issue of liquidity is the main reason why we are having the problem that we're having. And I'm saying that these two days, 12th and 13th March, okay, cannot definitely be the explanation for a liquidity problem, which obviously, if it was the case, would persist for a longer period. So if we have more, <laughs> Absolutely. Then, then, then we can conclude. But then, of course, you see, that is, how that about, is, that how is about, a very simplistic... Oh, please, 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 please. Okay, please. Sorry, sorry. How about Monday? How about Sunday? How about last week? How about last month? But it must the liquidity happen. problem only started last weekend. No, but uh, the effect so, of it will start at some point, won't at, it? So at what point did it start? Well, his argument is that it started on Monday. But that cannot be the case. Why not? Okay, because I've given you the information from so, appropriate authority. You, see, <laughs> look, you think you Parliament see, is Mr. not Mesa, appropriate authority? Look, 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 Mr. Mesa, you think Parliament is not appropriate authority? Could you, could you, without due respect, you <laughs> no, see, please, please allow, before please allow we the, came uh, on, Mr. Mesa. you gave me a warning. <laughs> Mr. Mercer. In fact, please. you threatened. Let's, let's stick to the point. No, no, not no, no, no. for me to interject. So I expect you to reciprocate. Go on, it's Mr. Mr. Mercer. Please make go your on. point. Because please you know I can do this. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Allow me to speak. You see, the NDC intends for a particular situation to persist in the minds of people. Look, and I agree, if there is a liquidity problem, it will show. So there As is the no liquidity God, problem. Absolutely. Okay, then the issue explain, of the explain. past two days that explain. is making the doomsday prophets who wish for doomsday to return in any event, they indicated to the good people of this country that they solved Dumso, and that it wasn't the MPP government that solved Dumso. Yeah. Correct? Yes. So how can these same people now turn around and will, say Dumso explain, is back? I will explain it. You recall that when they were in government, we told the people of Ghana that the real problems was financial. You recall? So, so this is all very familiar. Great. But I'm saying that the information that I have, and I've showed it to you, you've seen that it's from... <laughs> you see, look, no, please, please. like go I on. said, don't, don't allow yourself there to be distracted. There is absolutely no reason why this government will not be candid with the people of Ghana, will not be forthright with the people of Ghana, if there are issues that has to lead to a load shedding. I have something to ask you about the liquidity Please. situation, but, but before that, but, okay, I want to respond to a few. Yeah, yeah, I respond to a few. You made reference to Ghana, to Ghana Gas. Uh, if you and, and it's you important. No, just okay, before. I'll let you make you that see, point first. Okay. You can't throw dust in the eyes of the Ghanaian people. Since Ghana Gas commenced operations in 2013 or thereabout, ask them whether Ghana Gas was ever paid when they were in government. Sir, I explained to you. Ghana Gas has never been paid until <laughs> a year and a half ago when they started paying $3 million per month for $13 million of gas that is supplied to them every month. Okay, never from commencement of their operations under, the, under your watch did you ever pay one Kobo to Ghana Gas yet? They lumped the figure together to create the impression that it was under this Akufuado administration that <coughs> Ghana Gas has not been paid. So, it's can sincerity. I, so can I is Ghana Gas you? owed money? Absolutely. Okay. Because uh, the, the, what we want to clarify is whether we have a liquidity and problem or not. But before we get to that, Mr. Mesa, forgive me. Forgive me. Before we get to that, I need to clarify something. So this explanation about the lines in the West tripping, mm. it explains Tuesday. Okay. There is no explanation yet for last night. Absolutely, yes. And I expect Gritko to issue a statement 
that, and people so, of Ghana. So you don't, I have information so, on so, Wednesday that so, I've shared with you. All right. No, no, even, even no, the, the explanation you, you gave Mr. Mesa, the explanation you gave me is for Tuesday. There is no explanation yet for Wednesday. Public so we don't explanation. actually know. Yes. Okay, we don't actually know yet. Unless Whether of course or not you doubt the source of the information that I've shared no, what I'm with saying you is and our viewers even this the information you shared with us, the privileged information you shared with us, only comes your phone. Tuesday. <laughs> not <laughs> your phone. <laughs> no, Kojo, that's that's not fair. Please, because Mr. Mesa. No, yesterday, if this information is for Ghanaians, why do you hold on, hold on, Mr. Mesa? I will give you. No, just a second. That's. Uh, I, want to be, I want us you to see, be clear. I People you, slept in darkness no, last I, night. I, I, they need an explanation. And I, listen, so I will see, allow you to have a look at that statement again, please, see, quickly, for the benefit of those who want to know why they didn't have light last night. Have a look and tell expect, me the I explanation for Wednesday Rico night. Rico is going to come out and but, issue but, a statement regarding the explanation. Could you, could you? But sitting where I sit, I've showed you a document that explains what transpired on the 12th, which was um, the Tuesday, and then the 13th, which was Wednesday. And, can I, can and of I course, know? I expect that the appropriate persons will issue the explanation to the people of Ghana in due can course. I, you, because all right. obviously, you, Mr. Powell, I mean, please relax. I need to clarify the document I'll give you the opportunity. Okay, then. Okay, then. That's, so, that's a so, 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 so let's, let's sort out this liquidity situation. You say there is no liquidity problem. Not that I know of. All right. Then... I would love for you to explain to me how the government is doing it. Because what Mr. Bauer says is a fact. The tariff has been reduced. It is also a fact that the CD has depreciated. That means that ECG is spending more money to buy the same amount of power. This is a fact. That means that naturally the debt will accumulate. So uh, how are you inoculating yourselves against this debt. I do not have information on that. At this then you can't moment. say no, that no, there no, is no liquidity see, problem. No, 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 no. You see, Kojo, you are asking me a question that relates to particular operations of an organization, okay, which I do not have. The attribution that this liquidity is what has caused the power outages in the past two days. That's okay. what you are responding it's to. It's what I responded to to say okay. it cannot be the case. But you cannot state that there is no liquidity problem. But if there was a liquidity problem, we would be sleeping in darkness from Adam. So that means there's but no I'm liquidity just, problem. I've just given some facts mm -hmm. that demonstrate that but there you, will be you, a liquidity you, problem. Listen, unless you, you know have other about facts. About some to legislation that was passed, some secretization of some processes that were done to ensure that. The energy sector finances that had always been a problem Thank with you. that yeah. was resolved. Yeah. Okay, so I talking about Ezra. Absolutely. Okay, so and, and and to be honest, I don't know how the management of this uh, payments of bills within the ECG, Greco, and 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 VRA uh, is done. That's a matter of fact. I'm not in a position to say, but to suggest that these past two days is as a result of liquidity challenges and Kodo. When were these reductions made? The exchange rate has been declining, albeit at a slower pace in and the now, past year. Now, faster rate. You see, it's a faster rate. You now. see, <laughs> look, look, you can confuse your own self, not anybody else, because <laughs> yes, we're listening to you. If you are the one you talking, look so is, at the rate of depreciation, it is not in a crisis situation as our friends want the good people of this country. But it is having an effect. No, of course it would have an effect. So the question we're but asking I'm saying is, that the is effect there a is not as problem? grave. You're saying you Perhaps cannot I, speak to I that. I cannot speak to it as I sit here. All right. Yes. That's, that's, that is all I need to clarify. Absolutely. Because yeah, you said funny. earlier that there is no liquidity problem. Mm. We need to clarify. But you see, you can't the, speak the to facts that. on the ground do not support the assertion. That's the point that I'm trying to make to you. Well, uh, mm. the facts the facts are that the, the city is depreciating too, yeah, and course. the tariff is cheaper. And of course, the, that, Those the, are facts. the expectation is that government will manage that situation. How? No, but since they are managing Esla, it. Since ESLA, we still have debt. We've had debt in the energy sector since... <coughs> so ESLA hasn't solved it. Listen, you see, the ESLA is not supposed to resolve all the problems in one day. It's programmed. Right. And it's still running. And we we haven't have come debt. to an end of the matter, of course. Then okay. Debts you are accrue and pay. It you is only when you are you are, you are unable to pay your debt as and went before you. you okay. It's when you'll be in a crisis situation. Yeah. Have you right. gotten there? Mr. Bauer, yeah, very quickly on this, and uh, uh, I want us to be able to wrap up on e electricity and go to other things. <laughs> Mr. Bauer, I, I think in the same way that I will insist that Mr. Mercer doesn't 
uh, make a claim there is no liquidity issues mm -hmm. when he doesn't mm -hmm. have the facts. Mm -hmm. I will also have to insist that you don't make a claim that and these past it, two days mm -hmm. are because of liquidity issues when you don't have those facts. Look, let me let me let me make the point first, uh, and I hope you will indulge me to just explain a few things. One, he just made a statement now that seems to suggest that, that look, uh, Esla was not supposed to solve all our debt issues. Could you recall that in 2015, when that act, uh, that bill was brought to Parliament, the whole idea was that we had quantified the, um, the indebtedness of the utilities, the whole energy sector, and known a fair figure. And we knew that in five years, looking at the accruals that were going to come, we were definitely going to retire those ones. The understanding was that we were going to ensure that there was going to be a stop on the the piling of the debt, and that going forward we're going to have what we call cost-reflective tariffs, mm -hmm. so that we we then we then ring fence the debt, and that was the debt that was called the legacy debt yeah. that started from Rollins and Kofu, yeah. legacy debt will pay it. Indeed, if you look at the projections and even some of the actuals, you realize that we're making listen. We're making almost three billion, three billion Ghana cities every year annually, just from uh, that. And we felt that we could we could sort out the thing in five years. So for you to say that the energy sector levy that was brought into being in 2015 was not to solve the indebtedness is not true. It that's was to. That's not what he said. He it said it's a, it's a process. It's a program. It's a I'm, it's, 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 you yourself okay, said it's a five-year program. Yeah, I'm coming. And so okay, the expectation is that, that you will end in 2020. Said, okay, we so are I think, I don't think know he accepts. Yes, right. I, so if that's yeah. what I, I accept that. So that was what it was supposed to do. But you asked a very critical question. We had ring fence this. And you remember Nana Kufado's, his assistant Nana Kufado's state, uh, state of the, his first State of the Nation address. Uh, what's his name again? The finance minister's uh, first budget, he had given us a specific amount, and he said it was two for two point four billion uh, dollars. That was translated that based on the then exchange rate it was almost about ten billion Ghana cities. That was what it was. That was what was referenced. We have had that occasioned post that ring fence, so we know that we had the ten billion that we needed to deal with. <clears throat> we have had that occasion post that figure. Post twenty fifteen. No, post, post the, the ring fencing. The ring of fencing. That's, but of course, listen billion. to him. He yeah. says that the Esla amount was ring fencing was in 2015. Was ring fencing in 2015 That's when they passed yeah, yeah. the yeah. legislation. Yeah. And I said, I didn't give so you the no, no, no. debt no. post 2015. Oh, be patient, yeah. be patient, be patient. Be patient. Just wanted clarity. Be patient, yes. And I'm just saying that 2017, the State of the Nation's address, the His Excellency, the President, gave us the figure. The finance minister came and repeated that same figure. So we know what the figure is. Mm -hmm. We knew that in five years we were going to deal with that. But that one was a, bill, a, a debt that was lying down. But post this amount, the $2.4 billion, which is $10 billion Ghana cities, we have occasioned debt. That per the act, we're not supposed to occasion. As we speak, he knows that when we're doing the, uh, the State of the Nation Address uh, debate, we had all agreed. And based on what we had produced, uh, uh, what they call it, documents. I personally, in my debate, I produced documents. My ranking member put this document. ECG alone is indebted to about two billion post that. Two billion cities of cities. cities. Post that. That is now finally, if you rationalize, if you look at it from the bill if going up. Signed power purchase agreements for ECG. Mesa, please permit it. Please permit that, them. That the, the is point. making Mr. them pay six hundred million dollars per year for power for you. they don't need. So what please, would you expect? Please, please. Please, I would, insist on, I would insist on the same. I would insist on the same uh, courtesy to the Mr. Mesa, please. You know, Mr. Mesa, please. Allow Mr. Bauer. One thing about response. Andy, and I've known him for some time, when he's losing the debate, okay. this is what he does. No, let's not get this. Is he? Let's when he's not losing the debate, this is what he does. Please make your point. Is he? Uh, <laughs> so, for somebody, if you have a company that just two years can pile a debt of two billion. And he owes other people in the food chain. You can't sit here and tell me that there's no liquidity issues. You also gave another, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, scenario about the exchange rate, the reduction in tariff, and then what we have today. Definitely, you would, if for nothing at all, you don't need to go to any financial school to know that you have forex losses. If you have forex losses, they are classified as liabilities. 
who takes care of those liabilities? Either you transfer it to the consumer, or you will have to make a budget line for it. You have not transferred it to the consumer. There's no budget line for it. And therefore, your, even your money that you have to operate, you will, it, will, it will take it. And definitely you will have those liquidity issues. So when you get up and say this, that you have a problem. So I'm just trying to establish why there must be a, a liquidity issue. The last but point. That's not what I asked you. No, I'm coming. <laughs> but the last point I'm going to make. You are, well, I'm asking about the explanation as to why, why, why I said that this particular one could be a liquidity. That's the part I'm coming. I was just trying well, to give we're a now at could be. Could, yes. Yeah. When you started. No, 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 no. No. You are, you, you, no. I was trying to give you a, a, a situation. Look, if you look at the explanations that have been given, and I made that point by Gritco by PDS, they don't match. If it is about a disturbance on the transmission line between Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire, and it was restored, we expect that on Wednesday night, getting home and touching the wall, you should be able to put on your lights. That didn't happen. It didn't happen. But that we doesn't are necessarily yet... mean that it's because of no, the... No, no, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. That didn't happen. They are yet to give us an explanation to that. Apart from what Andy took from his phone, generated from his phone, he and was generated. He didn't ah, no, generate it. Was it from my phone? Let's be fair to him. He didn't generate it. Uh, when I, it I, I showed you. The did you know the source of the document? I saw the source. You know. I no. saw the source. Oh, of you phone. don't you know how to manipulate your phone? Oh, but in any so case, let's even assume that. No, no, no. Let's even assume that. All right, we're let's getting distracted. Oh, let's no, let's even assume that. Apart from the information, that is only privileged to him. As it were. I and saw we were, the source. No, 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 no. The point I'm. Uh, mm -hmm. that, you saw the source. I didn't yeah. even see the source. I didn't that's, even see the that's document. Fine. That's I didn't even fine. see the document. That's fine. Because I'm not even allowed to look on the phone because I may see something there he is not happy about. Which is fine. So he won't let me see. So, it. so let's. But the point I'm making is that. Yes. Apart from that. So mm -hmm. you realize that on one is we do not have an explanation to that. But I'm saying that. Just, let's just go a few steps backwards. A few months back. We had the same problem. Where we had this thing for two days or three days there about. They told us that it was a technical issue. Then in the ministry's own communication to us, they said that, look, uh, car power, uh, sorry, car power was going to come on stream because they have released some $15 million to car power to purchase crude. How do you take the purchase of crude to mean that it's a technical issue? And I'm telling you that it has always been a consistent explanation. And I, I, I hope so that... So the crude I, is run out? So of course, if you don't know... crude is run out. Oh, yes. Now we are having the problem now. No, I don't know. How would I know whether it has run out or not? All right. So I no, think the one, one thing we can make clear here mm -hmm. is that <laughs> you suspect that what is happening is because of liquidity. Yes. It's not a fact. It's a suspicion. Yeah. And, and right. you see, and you know, okay. but, but you know something. Let me, let me, add, okay. let me add just uh, one thing to, to this thing. You see, journalists must begin to start demanding of this government, not only in the energy sector, but in all sectors of the economy, for some level of transparency. I do not have a problem if, for example, I am told that I'm not going to have lies tomorrow evening. I can plan my life around that. But you don't pretend that all is well for me to get home and not have lies. Maybe I, I need to help kids do their homework. They, they can do that. I need to iron my things and iron the things of the kids to do. I need to even eat food to eat before going to bed. A lot of things. All that the citizenry action of government is that be transparent enough to tell us what the true situation is, rather than making our life look more miserable than it is. I'm so glad to hear this from you, because but for so many years, mm -hmm. the citizenry has been asking this of both governments. But and somehow, you see, you see, uh, the communication could you, could you, is still what it is. Like, like I said right at the outset, I do not see why yeah. that communication cannot go if that was the situation. But if that is not the situation, that communication would not so, come. So why would it today, as we speak now, as we speak now, it's past 8 o'clock, or maybe it's around 8 o'clock, that, that a government that is intended to be transparent as it were to Ghanaians, that said now we do not have a statement as to what happened yesterday. And it is only it is people possible. like you who can, get, who can get messages no, from the deputy on, minister hold on, hold on, telling us the reasons on, for why we got lights off on Wednesday. I, I have a relationship <laughs> with the deputy minister. Listen. The deputy minister has a relationship with Ghanaians. There's a social contract between the deputy minister and Ghanaians. All right, all right, gentlemen. But Rico issued a statement gentlemen. the... 13, which was yesterday, in relation to the 12 outage. And like I said, I expect that Grico would issue a statement as is consistent with the issue from yesterday. Okay. That would necessarily have to come because the Ghanaian people 
expect that government to be transparent to them. I do not have any issue at all. All right. Okay. Let's um, so let's, let's let's move on to our next issue. The United States of America has issued a human rights report for 2019, covering, um, I suppose, um, the, the year in review will probably be 2018. It was re represented in Washington, D.C. yesterday uh, by the U.S. Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo. Uh, and, well, it mentions Ghana in Chapter 5. Could you, of all the subjects that... Sorry, not in Chapter 5. ...newspapers in Ghana, it, that U.S. State Department report that I haven't seen. You share with me a statement that Mr. Kujetobla Ablakwa has issued. That doesn't make any comparison on year on year. Are you, are you and you expect us to have a conversation? Are you are talking about the rights of human are, beings? You are not equipped to respond to this issue. We can okay, move no, on to no, another no. one. No, no, no. If he's not equipped, I am equipped. Is it fair? No, no, no. I am equipped. I will be fair. No, I am equipped. I will be fair. No, 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 no. Mr. Mesa. No, no, no. Mr. Mesa. I am equipped to comment on it. Look, you are an enemy. Human rights. Look, gentlemen, please allow me to moderate. Please. So why don't you want to comment on this? I haven't read the document. No, no, no. Gentlemen, gentlemen. And that you are superintending over killings. We you are superintending over killings in the country and you say we shouldn't we discuss human rights issues. You haven't superintended over killings okay. during your time. Okay, okay. You have if not. You are, if you are not equipped to <laughs> discuss the issue, we will not discuss it. It will not be fair to one party. If you are not aware of this statement, no, you don't know about it, we will not go into it. Kojo, there is it is more important, time to discuss it. Is important, it. Look, Kojo, it is, there is no, more no, time Kojo, to discuss it later. Kojo, we have no, other things no, to no, talk Kojo, about. But let me, no, he, has, he has had a take on that. Let me, let me also have a I'm take sorry. on that. No, 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 no. He says he has no take. But you That's see, what you see, what happened was that so we were all giving information at the same time, two of us. And you want to speak to it. Have you seen the source of it? Yes, I have. You have seen the source of it. I went back to the U.S. State Department to check. Okay. So you sent me this document at what time? So we will get into another issue. Okay. The I group sues Manasseh, I group. 10 million mm -hmm. Ghana mm -hmm. cities mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. Castle mm -hmm. Militia Some report. So the DI group, um, which we have established uh, that in spite of their website, which describes them as a company that provides security services, they are not actually licensed to do so. Um, they were operating from uh, the castle, which is a state installation. And Joy News uh, put together a report in a documentary form that highlighted the work they were doing there. It highlighted their affiliation to the NPP. It highlighted the fact that they themselves in the past had described themselves as a vigilante group. And the fact that we today, as part of our campaign, not just Joy News, but all like-minded Ghanaians, are describing vigilante groups as militia groups. <laughs> but uh, DI group uh, has taken the matter to court. They say uh, they do not wish to be described as, well, they, they, they say they would like to sue Joy News and Manasseh for describing them as a militia group. I'll ask no questions. I'll just ask for your thoughts, Mr. Mercer. Well, um, I guess that uh, uh, it's a right that is guaranteed any entity, uh, any person, and of course, persons include entities as well, uh, to, uh, as it were, resort to the law courts if they so feel that some statement or some uh, work or some actions of another uh, causes them some injury. And so to that extent, uh, I think that is the right thing to do, rather than, you know, as it were, using some unorthodox means. And I, I was very disappointed to uh, hear that uh, some threats have been issued on Manessa's uh, life. And I think that the Ghana Police Service should spare no effort at all in ensuring that we get to the bottom of whoever issued those threats. I mean, uh, you know, Manasseh is a good friend of mine. Uh, you know, he's been, I was even having a conversation with him over the weekend, you know, and, and I admire his work, uh, of course. He's human, and, and so uh, it may not be the case that he will get everything 
uh, right at all times. But did he get it right to this one? Oh, I, I think that the description of the... Look, there is no denying that some film was taken at the Castle Gardens in which these young men uh, were captured. And so uh, it is not for me to, unlike you people, say it was doctored and that they picked the scenes from somewhere and transposed it onto Castle Gardens. No. These were seen by all of us. And you see, for the first time, I actually watched an investigative documentary. I've never watched any of those ones by Mr. Arime Yao. Never, ever. Why did you watch this one? Because I was interested, and because it was Manasseh's work, and because of the credibility that he's built for himself. And so I so actually... Anasseh, um, you've got, you're giving the criteria for watching. You've got, he's your friend and credibility. So I'm just trying to see what, oh, how, do you, describe, you how do you describe analysis? I see, I see where you, Mr. Bauer is going. Yeah, I, will not, to, I will not fall for the temptation. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> could you understand why I said that? He does. Oh, <laughs> because we've, we've spoken about, about why I have that view. Of course, I don't endorse analysis <laughs> mode of investigative journalism. I, <clears throat> Do not have and we'll discuss that another day. Yeah, that's fine. You know, so I, I took particular interest. But when the tape ended, I was like, oh, so is that it? Look, the spate of vigilantism, party foot soldiers or boys who are used to provide security for parties ought to stop. No doubt. I've said this consistently that political parties encouraging these young men, facilitating their work, using them, because the state apparatus fails to provide security for political parties when they are in opposition, poses a danger to this country. And so I endorse wholeheartedly the call made by His Excellency the President for both parties who are, want to do this to dialogue and find solutions to resolving the problem. Okay, so I'm not going to sit here and say that, look, because the gentleman used to be the bodyguard of then candidate. I mean, in fact, at the time, he wasn't even a candidate and ceased to be a bodyguard of his excellency president all the way back in 2010. And because he's associated with the party, they have given him some task to carry out for which they gave him an office. And he subsequently exploited the office for some <laughs> private work. It's justifiable. No. These are, I'm, I don't, I'm not, no, no apologies at all. Okay, but the vigilante militia group, so what's you, the problem? So you are saying that the DI group is not a vigilante group. That's not what I, well, I wouldn't be in a position to say whether they are party people who are used for party security. Well, of course, I saw the footage at a conference center, and, but I have never heard their name until the, uh, what you call it, um, documentary, but of course. But you uh, watched the documentary? Yes, I did. Uh, and the you, suggestion you was saw... that they had been in existence for a while. And you saw that their leadership, members of their, their, their leadership, had been interviewed by other networks. And yes. in those interviews, yes. they had described themselves as vigilante groups well, affiliated to the NPP. Uh, so That's their own description of themselves. Well, uh, yes. I mean, that doesn't necessarily make it factual. And if, if they were associated... No, see... So no. they were lying wait, 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 wait. No, let, me, let, me, let me make the point. Right. Let me make the point. If they were affiliated to the MPP, yes. So we, are, we now know that these are part of the groups that... <laughs> you didn't know earlier on. No, I, didn't, I hadn't heard of them before. Uh, okay. I'm being very candid with you. So if they describe themselves as vigilante groups, and we are describing all vigilante groups as militias, why should they be an exception? Well, that is his uh, 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 right to, as it were... Uh, complain for that description and so if he feels that 
going to court is what would aid him in the because of course uh, militia I think that the word militia uh, uh, within the context that uh, my own learned professor Herita Mesa Bonsu had used it in the I was always on commission hearings uh, has been completely uh, misapplied <laughs> yes that, that's my view okay okay because I, I listened to aspects of uh, uh, the hearing on the day that she used that word. She used it in a particular context. <laughs> yes. And look, that is not to say that these mm. boys do not exist. They do. But As to whether they are malicious or not, I disagree. Really? So, yes. so, so, so what because you want to see, you, you want to I see I them in camouflage no, holding no, AK-47 no. well, before well, you be convinced I, I don't, that I don't their purpose want, is exactly the same as a militia? I see them there. I want to see their end. And so I do not wish for them to graduate to uni uniformed men. No. But I'm saying that I have worked with some of them. It's okay. a matter of fact. Okay. Not the eye. No, but some of the... Of some course. Of the, yes. Like, you invisible. deny you haven't. Yes. Which one? Invisible force? Invisible force. force. Oh, I, or Delta force. force. The invisible force all over the country. It's so a fact. worked with some of so them. They provide them security you? for oh, us We are not saying that. Platforms. Which one did you work with? That's the point we are making. Origin. No, no, which group? Which group is that one? But Okay, but it's a matter of fact. You guys oh. pretend the Ghanaian people will be the judges. No, no, no I'm happy okay. you... Okay. See, look. look, when we go in on campaign mm. platforms, we mount uh, what you call it, platforms, mm. you are not there. Boys provide security. It's a fact. Okay. Um, we go in I, rounds. I know, I know, they I they sit in your cars. I don't do that. It's a fact. I don't do that. You I don't deny do that. it. I don't okay. do that. My it's fine. constituents are there. They can but call in. People do across that. the country yes, you may know not do political that, but are you saying parties that your party use these people. I will, no, no, I will come to that. So now let me, let me not take my bite on All right. Uh, yes, yes, I won't ask you yes, a question yes. either. Please the go ahead. The sincerity um, on you people's part will be exposed. Mr. Okay. Mr. Please allow him. We don't have a lot of time left. Um, first and foremost, I'm disappointed that um, this story will have a f uh, its way on the front page of Daily Guide. Of course, it's their editorial discretion to exercise that. So it is within their right. It's that I'm disappointed in it. Because this is something we should not even in the first place encourage. And I'll explain to you why. The only challenge they have is the name they have given to them as militia. That is the problem. But they have no problem about the job that they, or what they were purported to be doing. At least it has been established very clearly that they were captured doing, and the type of names, they, 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 the names they were given to themselves. I'm, I'm a product of barracks, barracks. My father was a military officer. And when you hear Alpha, Company, Charlie, Bravo, these are all names associated with military. You understand? We all had in the footage the, the commander. Ogasco cadet, they don't use Alpha, Bravo. And it's part of it's, it's all because they are, they are making they that. But you know how cadet is cadet formed. formed. Yes, I know. And you know how they are regulated. Yes. Uh -huh. so, so it's the same thing. It's the same thing. This is the challenge we have with this one. One, when, when the big documentary to, to wear military uniform, they didn't. I couldn't make it. I would have loved to go. Oh. Uh, but that is that is a service that the military yes, provides yes, to private like companies. Yeah. It's called team building. Uh, I think the the members of parliament should enjoy uh, it. Enjoy it. I you mean, will, you will appreciate it. Look, you, yeah, you it's really good. But we didn't other. come out as military men, and we haven't been operating in camouflage since. But have you know? Let me let me no, let me no, 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 don't don't distract me. Now you had a station when the documentary came out. You had the director of communication at the presidency saying that, look, they checked this thing, and these guys, they didn't know about them, that they were not there. They had made his check. That's the director of communications at the presidency. And I can understand why he, he would have made that statement. He would have made that statement on the basis of the fact that you had ministers of state who work at the presidency, some of them being there. You had Honorable Bukare, that's where his office is. Boniface and Co., that's where they have their offices. So he had checked that, and this was the problem. Then you have the minister of information saying, oh, we checked. Yes, they were there, but you see, they were there illegally because the office they were using it was meant for something in terms of you see the confiscation of government vehicles from uh, ex appointees and other yeah. things. My brother, let me make a point and make it very clear. This country, if we do not get up and fight this whole menace of militias, we're going to whether it is NDC or MPP, all of us are guilty of this, and we need to deal with it.
The next point we need to look at is the dialogue that the president has initiated. The NDC's position, and it is cons it's consistent with civil society organizations, that look, two of us are the culprits in this thing. Let's get other independent people to come and facilitate that. So Say that you've changed from mediation please, to Please, Mr. Mesa, our time is running out. Uh, uh, let's not no, now you've changed from mediation to So facilitate. mediation and facilitation. Okay, let me use mediation. To Where mediate the that. Please. Can I make my I'm going to have to wrap, can I make to wrap up and go then to my see, colleague. But because, the president, because the president does not believe in what he says, he simply that. is not interested. And he's not really interested in independent bodies being part of this process. Because we want transparency in the whole process. And we need independent people. We need the Peace Council. We need the religious body. We need some of the experts, the NA, uh, what they call security experts, to be part of this. Let's, they are not ready to do it because you have the president's own former bodyguard. As they say, they say he's a former bodyguard. Being the head of a militia. And I'm saying this, a militia. The threats to, um, and I say, and I'll say it, and I agree with you, that this is something they must investigate. Me for two reasons. Manasseh is my brother. Two, he's my constituent. Okay. And I will uh, also be interested in seeing how the president, uh, sorry, the police initiates these investigations. I'm getting a, 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 a signal we must move on. But I'm hoping that you commit to uh, disband party militia. I'm fully uh, committed to that. Mr. I'm Mesa? fully committed Absolutely. to that. Absolutely. Okay, happy to hear that. Right then. Now, you must stop first. Thank you, gentlemen, be, both for your time.